it's based on obviously in jazz which is a very popular music very beautiful music we have to know this that the speaker is talking directly to the musicians he addresses them as the jazz man and he is like explaining the beauty of this music and the way he is enjoying this but uh, the the real skill we had to do with this is to paraphrase and just paraphrasing this poem is reflecting the power of this music through the different instruments on your book you will find a picture with a band a jazz band and maybe you will appreciate the way they are enjoying playing this music this the following poem is the Kraken you know you already know the Kraken it was written by Alfred Lord Tennyson this poem well it's telling a story and you will find here that it's a uh, mythology the Kraken is Greek mythology actually though Alfred Lord Tennyson was from England anyway when you read this poem you will find some elements that really result very interesting especially because there is like a very short story in this, this poem maybe it's not a narrative poem but you can feel identified with the movies where you can find or you can see this this monster anyway just like the picture that you saw at the beginning which is practically the same you will find in the book it has to do with an adventure like this um, okay let's say that the Kraken uh, it's the poet's imagination that is captured by the mythical sea monster and obviously with uh, the viewing we have it's like it's like a squidward right something like that but it's, it's a huge monster then we have meeting at night this poem written by Robert Browning you will find a very beautiful picture about the moon and the way it's uh, talking about something about uh, something that has to do with with the sea with the lake it's divided into stanzas we have that contrast the dark night and the effect of the moonlight and the water this is creating a mysterious haunting mood in both the painting and obviously in the poem and we also you will find some um, a repetition of the S, for example, is Cicente is alliteration. The repetition of E and C and beach is an example of assonance. That's something you will find in this poem. The following is Reaper. Maybe it's not like the Reaper we can see in this slide, but it has to do with the worker, right? It was written by Jim Sumer. And it has to do with the people who work in the fields especially with this tool which is the reaper and uh, the way they help nature in the way we must respect the way they work with this with these tools then we have obviously you remember Emily Dickinson Emily Dickinson the girl who became very let's say um, depressive but actually they never found some track of depression in her but anyway she's very known for her poems remember she died and she only published seven poems during her life her life though she wrote she wrote 1775 poems so she's very famous her sister Lavinia was the one who found the poems in a trailer and then with the help of other poets they published these these poems the poem is success is counted to sweetest and it has to do obviously with the insight about the world this episode, this observation is insightful because most people would say that success is most important to those who have it the winners and maybe you will find in the picture of the book a person who is devastated maybe a player maybe soccer we don't know um, maybe you, you will, will agree with Dickinson about the idea that success 
is something that I, that everyone can obtain. So it has to do maybe with her mental condition that she wrote this point. So this is all. I hope you can find this this little summary helpful. I know you are very smart and you will keep it in mind. So let's see.